I'm not sure what's happened here on High Lonesome. But it looks like there's been some type of Mardi Gras party out here. Who knows what goes on. And we got some beer bottles. And more beads. There was definitely some kind of party out here. <laughs> Don't touch the beads, anyone. You don't know where they've been. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching the Green Dream Project. I'm Jessica. And I'm Peter. And today we wanted to talk about uh, one of the common native plants here in the Southwest, and that's the prickly pear cactus. There's about a dozen species of prickly pear here in the Southwest. These plants, the prickly pear, they're all native to the Americas, North and South and Central America, but they're found pretty much in any desert uh, location because people have introduced them there and they thrive. Um, they're a species of lowland cactus, so they're probably the most tolerant of the cold. They can even be found in parts of western and southern Canada. So I'm here uh, next to a prickly pear cactus. And there's a pretty wide variety of prickly pear as far as shape and size. They can range from less than a foot in height to about six to seven feet high. And they have different shapes of their pads. So these are the pads of the prickly pear cactus and uh, they're very fleshy. Um, a lot of people think it's like the leaves of the cactus but actually this is like the stem part. Um, and each of the pads have these big huge sp uh, spines on them. But the pads, they store water. Um, they also store different nutrients and they have, um, they produce the photosynthesis for the cactus to survive. I mentioned the spines earlier. Um, and the spines, those big huge spines, um, they're actually like modified leaves of the cactus. So there's these, you can see these big huge spines on here, but there's also, if you touch it, which you probably shouldn't be doing, unless you want a handful of prickers, but <laughs> um, there's also these really tiny fine little hairs. And you know, if you rub up against that or you touch it, you're going to get a lot of irritation and redness for days. What happens if you do get those in there? Do you, uh, is there any way to get those things out or how do you treat that? Um, well, you probably, if you can, if you can see them, you can probably pick them out. Otherwise, your skin usually is able to just kind of push them out naturally. So it'll push them out naturally, but it might. Might it's take. gonna take a while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's gonna be a lot of irritation in, in the meantime. Yep. Anytime you touch something, you're gonna feel it again. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Gotta be careful. <laughs> <laughs> Prickly pears also make uh, flowers, and they're really beautiful flowers, um, depending on the cactus. It could be yellow, red, or purple flowers and they produce uh, fruits from them. And they're also different colors. So the prickly pear will usually uh, make its flowers around the summertime, followed by fruit. It makes these brightly colored fruits and people use them for a lot of different purposes. The whole plant is edible uh, if you take the spines off, of course and 
the fruit can be eaten, you can juice it, people make jams and jellies and syrups out of it. I like to make a prickly pear lemonade. The pads are usually eaten as a vegetable and uh, the cactus also has medicinal uses. Uh, you can use it topically to treat burns and wounds and um, it's also been used traditionally for a lot of other purposes for treating gastrointestinal issues or um, diabetes, uh, just a lot of different things. Um, it's very nutritious. It's rich in soluble fiber, which helps to reduce uh, blood sugar. And it might also help lower bad cholesterol. And it contains a lot of um, antioxidants and vitamins and minerals. And be careful with your uh, pets when you're walking them out in the uh, in the desert. <laughs> Those spines can get everywhere. So humans aren't the only thing that eats these cacti. Uh, a lot of different animals like to eat the cacti too, like javelinas, jackrabbits, squirrels. Uh, they all kind of subside, not just on the fruit, but the pads too. Um, also, if you can kind of see in here, without me getting stabbed, <laughs> There's like a lot of, uh, kind of like a mound of like all the dead pads and stuff. Kind of like a bunch of debris. So all this debris is really good for different animals. You know, like snakes will hide in there. I'm sure the jackrabbits hide in there. Um, even pack rats. Also crew likes to try to get in there. Um, also, pack rats like to burrow in there. There's a lot of different little creatures that find protection in there from predators. I bet I wouldn't want to go. I wouldn't want to go in there <laughs> unless you're a crew. Unless you're a crew. So I don't see any on this cactus, but there's a certain type of scale insect that will feed solely on the prickly pear and. Kind of interesting, kind of gross. Uh, they produce a, a scarlet dye out of these insects, um, which was used by Native Americans. It was also used by the Spanish. Uh, the dye was actually reserved for Spanish royalty. So right here is our first official planting that we've done on our property. And it just so happens to be prickly pear cactus. Thinking about some of the potential uses that we might have for the cactus. Um, can, like we've talked about, we can use it for food. We can eat the fruit or the pads of the cactus. We can use it for medicine. Um, we're thinking it might make a good barrier. Put along a, a fence line or, or create some kind of barrier. Um, and it's good for wildlife to provide food and shelter for them. So that's our video about the prickly pear cactus. Um, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them at the bottom of the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe.